Hey everybody, I am Scotty J. Welcome back to Rock Titan Live. We've got one of the best segments to date. Woo! He is a six-time world wrestling champion who defeated Stone Cold Steve Austin and Rock in the same night. He's so fine, he has his own sparkling wine. A little bit of the bubbly. If Metallica and Journey had a baby, it would be his band, Fozzy. He's the Ayatollah of rock and roller and the one and only Y2J, Mr. Chris Jericho. Well, both those nicknames were from the last decade, but I uh, appreciate the intro. Thank you. Yes, yes. Well, you are timeless, my friend. And uh, speaking of timeless, so is Kiss. And your band, Quarantine, is, of course, covering some of the Kiss classics from the non-makeup days. So why Kiss? Why the non-makeup days? Yeah, well, the thing about it is, you know, in the middle of the quarantine, everybody's uh, looking for things to do and trying to figure out ways to stay creative. So uh, a couple of friends of mine uh, were doing a cover of kind of an obscure Kiss song from the 80s called No, No, No. And I asked them if they needed a singer. And that's kind of how it all started. And there's a whole kind of um, fan base that appreciates that era of Kiss. It's, it's, it's kind of a forgotten era. And there's so many great songs from it. So we said, well, let's do No, No, No. It's kind of a real cool, straight-ahead, double-bass rocker. And in this day and age where a lot of bands are putting out a lot of content because of the quarantine and because of the lockdown, let's call ourselves Quarantine with a K. And let's release this to rock radio and see what we can do with it. And lo and behold, we are number 60 on the mainstream rock charts this week. So it's funny. Only in a pandemic can you get a top 100 Billboard hit uh, doing an old Kiss song from the 80s featuring the guitar player from Kiss uh, as Bruce Kulick joined us to play on uh, on a couple of those tunes. So it's kind of a, 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 a cool kind of uh, see what you can do and there's no limits when you put your mind to something and that's kind of why we did it and it's been a hit. So uh, it, it, like I said, it's, it's kind of a really refreshing thing that there are actually some positives to this uh, to this whole COVID experience. Right on, right on. Now, going back to the early Fozzy days, you know, when you were a little bit more cover-centric, when you were doing this with quarantine, when you first started things out, did you find yourself kind of getting a little nostalgic thinking back to some of those earlier Fozzy days? Not really, uh, because, I mean, we've done a lot of covers over the years, and you kind of always do. Um, I think more importantly, it was a lot of fun for me to do these songs because... I don't get a chance to really sing like this in Fozzy. When you're talking about Heart of Chrome, which is a, a song from 1992 from Revenge, that's when Paul Stanley was kind of at his vocal peak. And the melody line is super high. And the key is, is I mean, it's just a high song to sing, but it was a lot of fun. And I knew I could nail it because I've been singing the song for 28 years ever since Revenge came out. It's one of my favorite tunes. And when I told Paul that we were going to be playing this song and recording it. He said, if you can do that song in the original key with the original melody line, then you're really pulling off something special. And we did it. So, um, like I said, it gave me a chance to kind of use that level and that, that, that range of my voice that I haven't had a chance to use. And I don't use a lot in Fozzie because we, we, we play different types of songs. It's still heavy and hard rock, but it's a little bit more uh, 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 controlled vocal rather than just this high ass super screamy type of vocal which is fun to sing as well yeah so did you channel a little bit of your star child yeah i mean well you have to i mean like i said like i think something about kiss that a lot of people don't realize and don't remember is just how great they are as musicians and how great paul stanley is as a singer so these are not easy songs to do and that always happens whenever you do a cover song a lot of times even if it's something like yeah i'm breaking the law sure i can do that it's easy and then we actually delve into it and break it down it's like this is not easy at all none of these songs are easy um and that's why once again it's a great challenge to do them and it's a great vocal exercise to sort of stay in shape uh in the middle of this quarantine especially as we get ready to record the new Fozzie record and we haven't played live since january so this is a good way to kind of keep the pipes warmed up and keep them uh, keep them rocking Right on, right on. Now, it's fun. so you're talking about, you know, Paul Stanley, obviously, and the uniqueness of his vocals. With No, 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 you got Gene Simmons there, the demon. Yeah. Know? So uh, how cool is it? How cool is it for you to, like, be Well, the once demon? again, you know, I, I, I think it was easier for me to sing Heart of Chrome and sing the Paul song than it was to sing No, 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 because I wasn't as familiar with it. And Gene's a great singer, too. There's some high screams on those songs. The fact that Gene is playing and singing at the same time as a bass player, you know, like I said, for all the guys that that, that we that we had, 
you know, in, in, uh, in playing these tunes with PJ Farley from Trickster and uh, Kent Slusher from Luke Bryan's band and Joe McGinnis from Classic 78, all four of us said, like, these are not easy songs to do. Right. And you got to be, you know, you got to be on point as a musician to do that. I don't think a lot of kind of marginal Kiss fans know that. So once again, we took this song that's very obscure from the 80s and made it into a top 100 hit here in 2020. Uh, we take great pride in that. It just shows how good the song is and how, how well we were able to, to pull it off. Yeah, right on. One of the things that's really cool about this, and you touched on it a little while ago, is that of Bruce Kulick you know, playing on Heart of Chrome with you guys. Because, of course, we've hosted him a couple of times. Great, great dude. And, of course, yeah. he plays with you know, Grand Funk Railroad. Now, how special was it for you to actually have the guitarist from that era on that song playing with you? Well, I mean, uh, Bruce is a good, good friend of all the guys in the band. I've known Bruce for almost 20 years. He's a great guy. Uh, I, I worked a lot with his brother, Bob, who recently passed away. And yeah. Bruce has always been a great guest on Talk is Jericho. And um, so it wasn't hard to ask him. And um, I kind of thought that he'd want to do it. And I was really happy that he did and did a great job in the video as well. So I, Bruce is very proud of his era. And I think the fact that he's got these guys you know, uh, kind of standing up for that era. Um, it, it makes him proud. And I think Paul and Gene are, are, pr are proud of it as well because it's, it's not really talked about. Most KISS fans that go to, you know, the, the end of the road final tour want to hear all their great stuff from the 70s. And I'm like, give us some more stuff from the 80s. Like, that's my era of KISS. And I get a lot of people will go, what? How can you like 80s KISS better than the 70s? Because that's when I came into KISS. That's when I got into them. So I'm very, uh, very into that era. So to be able to kind of play some of these songs... You know, maybe we'll do a live show at one point. And the best part of all is we can keep recording these songs for as long as we want because there's so many of them. There's so many great ones. So uh, the kind of treasure trove of these unknown songs is, is limitless. Yeah, no, they've got a great catalog to your point. But what are the prospects for quarantine? Are you looking at doing a lot more with this project? Well, like I said, I mean, it never would have existed if there wasn't uh, a, 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 you know, a pandemic. And the beauty of it is, like, we can do this whenever we want. And we do things the right way. Like I mentioned, we were, we were, we got some radio play for it. We've got a lot of, you know, 100,000 views on YouTube and that sort of thing. So we know the, the, the demand is there. The interest is there. So there's no reason why we shouldn't do more. And I think there's even a possibility that we could do a gig or two along the way if the circumstances are right. So we're all dudes that just enjoy this air of kiss. We love playing together. I haven't even met Joe McGinnis, the guitar player, yet. This is how you form a band during a pandemic, just over <laughs> Zoom calls and Skype calls and that sort of thing. So it was just uh, great timing. And like I said, it's it's one of the few pluses from this uh, COVID-19 era for sure. Yeah, no, without a doubt. Now, all that being said, because of, you know, the quarantine that we're in and social distancing and all that stuff. Is there anything else that you've been able to do on that's just such a big part of your career apart from quarantine, or has quarantine really been your focus during this time? Is there anything else you've been able to do with Fozzie? I know we were looking forward to a new album, and I think I saw the other day that you had to put that off. Well, I mean, you don't really put it off. It's just that we're still working on it. I mean, okay. obviously, everything kind of got pushed back and put off just because of the world that we're in right now and the circumstances surrounding it. But we just tracked drums uh, for the new album. It's... You know, there's so many great songs on it. Uh, it's going to be one of those things where uh, we're going to have some real problems deciding which songs to, to choose as the single singles. Um, and, you know, we, we were playing in March, April. We got, that got moved to July, August, which is now going to get moved to October, November. We still have four shows in August, which are in South Dakota and North Dakota, which is really cool because there's no cases there. Right on. Um, so it's good to see that those states are opening up and ready for some rock shows. And they're not just random ones. It's Sturgis with ZZ Top and Buck Cherry and Black Label Society and Fozzie. And it's going to be a great lineup. So I'm excited for that. Uh, in front, you know, when you talk about wrestling in front of no people and no shows, the fact that we actually have some shows coming up is a kind of a big boost for everybody involved. So we're still doing as much as we possibly can and uh, we'll continue to do as much as we possibly can. Uh, and we're going to make a great new record uh, in the meantime as well. Right on, right on. Well, your fan base, I know they're very special to you. And uh, the Blue Rock Ridge Festival, that's something that was coming up. I actually know a guy, he's he's the son of the photographer that's covered you a few times. And he was ready to go to this festival just to see Fozzie. Fozzie was all yeah. he cared about. 
How special is it, you know, the dedication of your fans, the support from your fans? How much does that fuel what you do as an artist and an entertainer? Big time. I mean, that's the reason why you do it, right? That's what kind of the, the idea of, of why we do what we do. It and, and, you know, we had to work twice as hard to get people's respect just because I was in the band. But we've got their respect now. We've got five top 30 songs and three top 10 songs. So this is not a Chris Jericho thing, and it never was. But now I think people realize, like, holy shit, these guys are serious and they're legit. And they're a great rock and roll band with some really big hits. And we're going to continue to do that. Um, and I think it's when you hear that people are coming from all over to see us play and really excited for the new record worldwide, all our fans everywhere, that's the result of many years of, of hard work. And uh, many years of, uh, uh, of putting in the time to, to release quality music and to put on great live shows. And when you do that consistently, uh, you have um, a real uh, uh, re reputation that builds. And we're very proud of that reputation. Yeah, no, you should be. And Judas did great. That was a great album, by the way. As Thank far you. as is, yes, absolutely. Now, as far as quarantine goes, do you have anything more immediate in the pipeline? Do you have other songs already lined up, ready for release? Well, the, the, the guys are super excited. They've, I think they've already tracked the third one. They're just waiting for me to do vocals on it. But I'm like, guys, slow down. No, no, no is still on the radio. We haven't even released Heart of Chrome yet. So um, we've chose the next two songs. We're going to put out another two songs, another Gene song and another Paul song. But uh, it's a surprise. Sweet, sweet. Love surprises, love surprises. And there's no greater yes. surprise, everybody, on Rock Titan Live than having the one and only Chris Jericho with us right now. Chris, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, congratulations on all the success you've had with Fozzy, with your wrestling career, you know, and the transition you've made over to the AEW, and of course with quarantine. Um, awesome stuff, awesome stuff, man. And uh, please Appreciate be safe. You. Yes, be safe, stay thank healthy, you, man. man. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate your support and, uh, and and thank you so much, man. Hopefully we get a chance to come back to Lancaster soon. We love playing there. Yes, the chameleon got to catch you there for sure. All, All right, right, everybody. Well, I'm Scotty Cheers, J. Guys. Rock Titan thank Live. You. Woo! We're up. Ow! Uh